who gets paid the most who gets the most respect joining a startup or joining a medium sized company hello everyone this video is on software careers and it's primarily for those of you who are right now in college or maybe have just joined your first job and looking to see what kind of career you should pick up for the next 10 15 20 years maybe at the end of this video you'll you'll find it useful so i just want to note down all the different types of software engineering roles you can pick up a ui engineer front end engineer back end developer operations called devops you can have a software test you can have a database data engineer you can have a machine learning engineer and overall you can have a full stack engineer okay this is roughly the types of engineering that you can pick up but there's also who you are systems engineer platform engineer and a application engineer who you are is more like what you do in relation to the business so application engineers are folks who are more on the business side of things they write code for the business side and they use libraries to write this code but the idea being an application engineer is very close to the customer this might be something that you find exciting when you look at a platform engineer their customers happen to be application engineers so they expose apis or platforms which can be used by other app engineers in general application engineers therefore write platforms or libraries okay both of them are very similar a library is basically pieces of code which you can reuse so let's say there is a library to find out the mean of an array you may not have this as an application engineer you want to optimize this write it in a good way it's extensible it's scalable that's handled by these guys platforms are basically a set of apis which are being exposed by the platform engineer these apis may be connecting to a database connecting to different systems you don't really care as an application engineer as long as you can use these platforms to do your job again very important to remember is that there is no hard line between these things there's a very fine line between application engineer and platform engineer in startups there is no such differentiation you are everything but as an organization gets larger and larger there's an expectation that one piece of the system which is being used by many people should be converted into a platform and there are engineers who do that work now comes the systems engineer uh, and as you can think of systems engineer are having their customers as platform engineers what they build is practices or engineering products that help other engineers especially platform engineers so you're writing an api and in this api you need a network protocol but the network protocol that you have let's say http is not good enough for you so what ends up happening is a lot of the platform engineers complain that you know i didn't really need consistent hashing this product has consistent hashing or i'm not finding anything good out there uh, in the market to use so i just can't write a library i can't write a platform without database or very critical tool that will be handled by a systems engineer so their standard of design and scale is usually much higher than anyone else in the overall organization okay, these folks are usually senior engineers this is both entry level but having said that you can take a person platform engineer entry level but most likely they'll be able to perform after some time application engineers are usually easier to train uh, and they can get your code out quickly who gets paid the most who gets the most respect frankly speaking you should focus more on what you do rather than who you are who you are changes as time passes uh, initially you might join as a application engineer you might then become a platform person and then you might move to systems Uh, some organizations are not large enough to have systems engineers startups often don't have the you know the scale or the use case to actually have a platform engineer so it's not like this person is respected more that person is respected more it's just that as large organizations tend to do they take common problems and convert it into automated solutions uh, these guys do it quite well these guys do it even better and therefore the pay is also you know reflective of that but now let's get to what you do so for example you can be a machine learning engineer on the application side you can be a data engineer on the system side you can be a software test engineer on the platform side so you write platforms as a software test engineer that other testers use to test your software
So now let's talk about the UI engineer. You are likely to be writing user facing interfaces that deal with the design and interactions in UI. User interface, user interface, interactions, UI. What have I done? Well, simply put, if there needs to be a page that has to be created or any kind of an interface that the user is going to use to, let's say, take the example of Uber uh, and you need to book an Uber, you have the interface that you speak to. You don't really know whether it's JavaScript or Python or what. The look and feel is what you're looking at at this point. And that is what a UI engineer does. They code that. They make the look and feel come to life. Any kind of app or website implementation is in the shoulders of the UI engineer. Front-end engineer usually does the UI engineering also, but I have separated it out so that it's easier to understand. What they do is they come up with common functions in the UI. So they are sort of on the platform side of the UI uh, and interactions with the backend. So any kind of API calls that you need to make or if you are going to make a call to an external system, usually that is encapsulated in code in the front end by a front end engineer. This is similar to a UI engineer and of course, like I said, in a startup, there's not going to be, you are a UI engineer, you are a front end engineer. No, this is just going to be one person. Okay, in fact, <laughs> there's probably going to be a person who's full stack. Full stack, by the way, is a very common uh, term and it's, the word for this would be bastardized, but I'll use a better term. Uh, it's a potpourri of various engineers. Uh, you can say a full stack engineer usually means backend plus frontend plus UI plus database. If you have a large company, then the full stack engineer means this. If you have a small company, then the full stack engineer means everything. Basically, they have good or acceptable levels of engineering in all of these functions. Backend, uh, I think, is the most common type of engineering along with front end uh, and UI. The idea here is you expose APIs on the server to read and manipulate system data. System data might be the profile data of a user also, but there is some data that is owned by your system. It needs to be read from time to time. It needs to be manipulated. It needs to be updated or deleted. Go ahead. That's the backend engineer's job. DevOps, developer operations. This is a interesting space and it has really boomed recently. Uh, the idea is that when you're looking at the infrastructure where your code runs, okay, so which machine does it run on? Uh, if you have to take the same code, make a copy and make it run on another machine, how do you make that happen? How do you balance the load between those, these two systems? So it's it's not so much how do you do it, but how do you do it efficiently? So uh, a developer operations engineer will write either scripts or code to manage the infrastructure of your system. So infrastructure, automation, and management. You can think of the person who writes the code for setting up a Docker container, setting up any kind of interactions between two systems. You might think of these guys as people who come up with the uh, definition of the containers that you need, which will be actually running your code. So Docker containers, for example. They also deal with other problems of a system. Infrastructure deals with logging. Infrastructure deals with monitoring. Uh, infrastructure in general deals with how do you add another server, remove another server, um, and do this smoothly without losing sleep. So that would be the job of a DevOps engineer. Software test, I think this one is interesting. Not many people do it. Similar to DevOps, it is boosting right now. Software test is usually done by backend engineers in many companies because the expectation is you write the code and you test it. Software test is also done by front-end engineers in many companies because you write the code and you test it. But in some cases where you need either extremely high certainty that the code will run or Organization is built in such a way that we believe that testing needs to be done by somebody else. Otherwise, you'll have rose tinted glasses over here. Uh, in that case, they write tests to check for code correctness 
and efficiency. It's important to note that software test engineers may not necessarily write code for every single feature of your system. Because software test engineers are not specific to a team, uh, they sometimes have their own team out there which makes sure that the system is working fine. What they end up doing is treating many of these systems as black boxes. So the core features are tested, but many of the newer APIs or less important APIs are not tested with the expectation that you know the API could change. You can automate part of this that when a new feature is being added, the code is also added over here, but that is not usually the case. This is a much more uh, black box like treating of every system. For example, if you say I will give you four nines of availability, okay, as a service, let's say a profile service says I'll give you four nines of availability. It means that out of 10,000 requests, 9999 nine, nine will pass and one will fail. So that's the four nines. So how do you test this as a software test engineer? You write some code, hit that API, four nines should come back correctly and only one request should fail. Basically, the bare minimum correctness and efficiency will be tested by these guys. Database engineer. Many people confuse data engineers with database engineers. Uh, in small companies, they are both the same. But a database engineer deals specifically with databases only. They don't really try to massage that data or transform that data. They make sure that when a system is writing to this database and reading from this database, the latency is low enough and the consistency may be high enough. So effectively, the database is treated like a service by a database engineer. You provide service level agreements that could happen. Uh, you could write a layer on top of the database which looks at the data uh, requests which are coming into it. They can be access requests or they can be write requests to the database. Uh, and what will happen with these engineers is they'll make sure that the databases are always functioning. Contrast that with a data engineer. They may have multiple sources of data and managing the databases is not their job, but to convert the data into something more meaningful or put them all together in one place or to run scripts so that they get some output is the job of a data engineer. Okay, here you're seeing that transformations of existing data or finding out how you can take the data and change it into something else or allowing other people to manipulate this data is the job of a data engineer. Making sure that the data is right and can be taken is the job of a database person. Like I said, in small companies, uh, they are both the same. Finally comes a machine learning engineer. Uh, they are similar to a data engineer in the sense that they also work with data. But after this process is done, you actually can run some machine learning algorithms on them. You can use some sort of predictive analytics. Data analysts can actually pull from this data. Machine learning engineers can pull from this data and give you even more deeper insights, inferences. And that's the job of an ML engineer. This is the database level. This is the data level. And this is the ML level. After ML, you might have someone in the application side actually reading this. Or this data or this inference can be fed into a backend system, which is then queried by the front end. And the front end is called when a UI event happens. So you see that all of them are related to each other. Um, which one should you be? Okay, uh, let me be frank. You can be any engineer that you like. It's not that this person is hidden from the real world. They talk amongst themselves and they never go out and understand uh, the business requirements. That's not true. Machine learning engineer actually goes full circle and comes back and goes really close to the business. Data engineers also, because their customers are machine learning engineers, have a rough understanding of the business. You could make the argument that database engineers are rather secluded uh, and so are backend engineers. They are a little divorced from business. But in, in, in a small or medium sized company, again, these guys will be so close to the application that they'll end up knowing the business side of things. Also, if you're a full stack engineer, uh, it's difficult to grow in four directions. It's better to specialize in one direction as you become really, really senior. But it's also true that if you want to be a senior engineer who is looked up to by, by many different types of engineers, you have to know something about everything. There's this talk about T-shaped learning. So you, you grow in one side, so your depth increases here, but then you also start getting a lot of breadth. So as you grow, you grow on this side also, and you grow on this side also. 
is easier said than done obviously if you are just starting your career and you are worried that you know i'll be put into a box and i'll never be able to get out especially folks who are uh, joining as test engineers or folks who are joining as database engineers have that kind of concern i would say it's a it's a genuine concern and in fact if you join as a test engineer or a devops or a database engineer these roles tend to be extremely focused on one thing it's not a bad role just to clarify but here you have more leg room you can move from back end to front end a little more easily uh, from test moving to anything else is a little tougher in my personal experience looking at different people this is something that i have noticed from a data person moving to back end or moving to machine learning is always possible as you can see the t you are close to this side in terms of breadth and depth can be uh, a lot over here all of them are roughly the same but these are little more specialized if you ask me what about scope for future again that's really hard to predict but if you had to bet on uh, one thing i would say these two roles are evergreen roles they are expected in every organization you need a front end engineer you need a back end engineer in fact they try to cut costs and that's why they take a full stack engineer and so these two are extremely safe bets software test engineers are not going anywhere uh, neither are devops neither are database folks but if you want a lot of breadth uh, and a lot of competition also then these two roles are nice if you want very little competition then this is a good place to go but there's very little opportunity also at this point in time machine learning engineers do not have as many job openings as these folks and finally which one should you go in terms of these three roles i think young engineers find this the coolest but they can't be here because they are too young so they find this the second coolest uh, and they say let me be a platform engineer but i'll be frank with you joining a startup or joining a medium sized company you'll be doing all three things and whatever they call you remember you are both close to the business and you are writing code so that it can be reused for the future so i hope at the end of this you have a decent understanding of what different roles indicate when it comes to software engineering what you do is quite important and who you are is a function of the amount of time you're spent and everything else thank you let me know in the comments if you agree or disagree or vehemently disagree uh, and i'll see you next time bye bye